there. Welcome to Carstead Partners Packaging Spotlight. Hi, this is Kevin Carstead of Carstead Partners, here for a very special edition of Packaging Spotlight. Well, they're all special, but this one's really special. Uh, two weeks ago, I had an opportunity to uh, have breakfast uh, during a uh, during a print uh, 13 special event in Chicago. Um, I had breakfast, was invited with, uh, with three other packaging journalists, not just journalists, but packaging journalists, um, to have breakfast with uh, Benny Landa to talk about his, uh, you know, the new uh, Landa presses and the state of uh, where the release is and all that kind of neat stuff. I'll talk about that in a few minutes, but we had a really nice uh, opportunity to have a, a kind of a warm discussion. We even talked a little bit of uh, Middle East politics with, uh, um, with Benny. Um, with me was uh, Danielle Jashevsky of Labels and, uh, uh, Labels and Labeling Magazine, Pat Reynolds from Packaging World, and Yolanda Simonsis from uh, YTC Media. Um, all of us are, are packaging people, and it was really, I, I really want to thank the Landa folks for segregating us out and talking to us a little bit uh, separately than, than all the other commercial print folks, which some of my colleagues were, were invited to that. And there's an interesting reason why, and I'll talk to that in, in just a second. Um, wanted to give us an update on the uh, you know coming out of Drupa and that my feelings at Drupa were for Landa that they were that Drupa was about 12 months too early. That's just my feeling um, that uh, it would be really great for uh, for Drupa to have happened this this year for the Landa technology to to hit. That doesn't mean for some of the other technologies that were done Drupa was was right on time time slot. So um, and it also I also with that in mind. When I saw the print samples at Drupa, when I heard of the targets for, uh, um, for beta testing and all of that, I was really a pragmatist. I was really a realist. I was thinking, you know, the samples are okay, but they really have a lot of problems. They've got a long way to go with them. And they even admit that, you know, that that's the case. Um, but uh, at this point in time, I think that they're right on schedule. And, and well, right on schedule for the new schedule. Um, so let me just kind of lay it out, and you've probably read about the, 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 the new schedule and all that. The packaging press, the, uh, the, S10, um, the S10 FC, FC stands for folding carton, will be the first press that uh, Land is going to come to market with. It'll, it'll all come to beta with. And that's going to happen a year, roughly a year from now, it'll be fourth quarter of 2014. Okay, And it will be the folding carton press that's going to market first. Now, I feel really good about that because usually us poor uh, packaging folks are, uh, uh, we get the, the new technology from the commercial print side after it's already been released there and you know they, they kick the tires and knock the kinks out of it and then we get it. This time we're going to get it first and it's for, for a very simple reason. For the Primarily the folding carton press is going to be asked to print uh, one side, of, just on one side of the folding carton of, of the paperboard. They, uh, the commercial press is going to be asked to print on two sides, so they get the kinks knocked out with us on the, on the one side and then uh, take it into uh, um, the commercial print space as well for, for double-sided printing or for duplexing. So I'm, I'm really glad that we're the first ones. Also, it's going to be, I'm kind of going from notes, uh, to, so please forgive me as we're going through. I don't usually do that. But uh, I'm going from notes because this is going to be in an in actual uh, paper blog as well or real blog, if you will, um, in different places. So the uh, the size of the press is also interesting. Uh, the first press out will not be a small press. It will be a 41 by 29 and a half inch uh, sheet size press or image size press, which they call, which, which the industry calls, or that side of the industry calls a B1 press. Um, I try to impress upon the packaging people or people trying to sell in a packaging, drop the Bs. Get rid of the bees. Nobody in packaging or packaging people don't necessarily understand where the bee is coming from. That's a commercial print size. Just give us inches. Give us centimeters if you're in Europe. Give us inches if you're here in the States. So uh, 41 by 29 and a half. Let's see if uh, the, my bee statement uh, uh, strikes a chord with anybody this time. Um, Benny talked a lot about uh, the new ink injectors, okay? Injectors, they use the term inkjet or ink uh, injectors. The rest of us use the term inkjet heads. Same thing. I may slip back and forth between injectors and heads, but uh, but that's the, that's kind of what it is. They say they have a new set of heads uh, of injectors. I'm sorry, I did it already without meaning to. 
um, a new set of heads. Speculation is that they're still the Kyocera heads or injectors, which is what they were going to, uh, which they were talking about uh, in their earlier, um, uh, you know, in the Drupa times. But uh, when I asked Benny about that, that was uh, um, uh, not confirmed nor denied, as they as they say. Um, but it's it's giving them a it's going to give them the opportunity to go from uh, 600 DPI to 1200 DPI, which is a significant um, uh, quality improvement. Um, it'll also allow them, because of the way they're structuring them, to uh, um, to handle uh, uh, head dropout, nozzle dropout, and that, so that you'll get a better consistent uh, image throughout and uh, and that. So that that will be uh, that will be a very uh, very good piece. Um, uh, we're going to talk about some of the speed issues related to these nozzle changes, but uh, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to show a picture of the S-curve that, uh, that um, uh, Benny put up uh, when he was talking about the quality. You'll see here that the, the quality that they expected, and they, they fully admit that their quality was not real good, and it was all behind glass and everything. Nobody was seeing samples or anything at Drupa, but uh, the, the quality at Drupa was down at the bottom side of the S-curve. Now they're up towards the top. Their goal is to have um, um, uh, offset quality by uh, by a year from now for, for the rollout of, uh, of beta. Quite honestly, the samples I saw were good enough to sell for many cases, okay? Now, maybe not every single case, but for, for Benica. And again, we only saw the good stuff. They didn't bring out the, uh, the, the poor samples or the samples that had problems. Some of the interesting pieces of that, though, were that uh, they, they, um, uh, they showed some samples on, actually on toilet paper. Um, they showed some samples on tissue paper, on very rough surfaces, on uh, tire, uh, uh, Tyvek and, and all that, different surfaces, along with carton board. Um, but what they were trying to show was that, and, and highlight, that this technology does not um, image directly to the substrate. So the inkjet heads, as, as normal inkjet presses are, are out there, the inkjet head goes right over that uh, you know within you know fractions of millimeters or whatever to the uh, to the substrate in this case in the in the landa technology it's it's imaged onto a blanket and the blanket transfers the image onto the substrate so there's no direct contact so which that what that does is what that says is that companies using or if they, it gives you the opportunity to use um, a lot of recycled board um, a lot of different types of substrates uh, you know paperboard you know and 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 uh, and uh, um, pulp-based uh, substrates, so it can give you a little bit more flexibility. It also means that the ink doesn't spread because it goes on dry. Um, and, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll leave all that technology discussion to them, but with it going on dry, there's no ink spread. It doesn't go into the porous paper and, uh, or, or substrate, so it, it could give some opportunities for um, folding carton applications uh, for, for other things. Um, next thing on the list was uh, FDA compliance. They really didn't talk too much about that, although Benny did say that he could drink the inks. He said he wouldn't want to be around him after he drank the inks, but he could drink the inks, meaning that they were, they, they were uh, because they're uh, an aqueous-based ink that they're, that they're using for it. Um, all this kind of remains to be seen. The samples had no odor on them, as, as we see with a lot of, uh, um, especially UV um, inkjet samples that people hand out at trade shows and the like. There was no odor. We were over coffee and uh, and stuff by the time they brought the samples out. So maybe the Starbucks kept the odor down, but I don't think so. So that needs to be tested out, but I think uh, and validated and verified in the in the industry. But I'm very very uh, um, optimistic about that. Um, let me show you the press here quick, and you've probably already seen some things, but I'm going to point out a couple of things on it. Um, on the left-hand side of this image, and if, I, if it images the same way I'm thinking it's going to image on the video, but you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about is the, uh, the operator cockpit. The operator cockpit, they call it now, um, is an interesting piece. Uh, if you remember, and I'll, and I'll see if I can put up a picture of the old, uh, um, uh, the Drupa vintage um, uh, piece where they had the big iPod style uh, control panel right in the middle of the press. Um, it was interesting. I'm walking the Drupa floor, and we're we're in the in the very impressive booth at Landa, and my partner Jeff Wetterston and I were were talking to the vendors, and and that and Jeff turned to me and he looked. And he says, "Well, that's a forklift uh, accident waiting to happen." Where the, where the big beautiful monitor was right in the front of the machine. So 
with talking to, uh, as they say, they talked to 120 of their customers and got a lot of uh, ergonomics and, and that worked out. The cockpit is now moved. It's kind of nestled in at the end of the press, at the at the uh, the output end of the press. You can see that they have their they've got television monitors um, in the middle there that that uh, that monitor uh, internal press operations at uh, at you know in real time. They even have. Um, all kinds of nice stuff. I think there's even a cup holder for the for the operator. But um, kind of one of the things they might want to look at is they've got the viewing table sitting right there in the middle with a light over the top. But um, uh, viewing tables need to kind of keep the ambient light away. If it's really going to be a a, a viewing table, a, a light box, if you will, viewing table. So you know, I, I wonder a little bit about some of the. Um, um, uh, ambient light coming and, and, and all of that, but it's it's there. I think the ergonomics are, are really interesting. Take a look down at the center of the press now. It's what they're calling the optional inline coder. Now that's that gray piece in the middle of that bio, in the middle of the press, right after the imaging station, is a uh, a coding unit. And they're using a, a flexo plates um, or whatever for, or, or they could do a, a, a flood coat varnish, but they're uh, varnish or coating. But uh, and in a video that I'm going to have a link to here, um, Benny talks about the needs for that. The, the, the industry told them they need coatings. Uh, we need it now. We can't wait for it. So they're going with conventional coatings, as some of the other manufacturers are. In my head, I'm saying if I got a digital press, why the heck do I want to have? analog coding. I don't want to analog anything in here if I can help it. So in my view is that there's the technology is out there for high speed imaging or, or shooting or jetting. It doesn't have to be the same kind of head. It could be any kind of, it could be a valve jet, it could be any kind of different technology to image. It doesn't have to be high res. It doesn't have to be excessively fast because all it has to do is match the speed of the press. So I think the technology is out there. It's a stopgap temporary solution i would imagine that uh, within two or three years they'll have some kind of uh, of digital coding to allow for the advantages of uh, of the digital solution to really really take hold so um and uh, and again in, in the video benny stresses that this is a stopgap measure um couple of a uh, couple of other stops oh one one other thing in in benny's discussion he said he really really stresses that they don't see these presses as being niche players, as being just uh, you know going in and being a digital press and and doing ultra short runs and all the the, the stuff that that conventional digital presses I use that word loosely that that the other conventional presses are really kind of or, or digital presses rather are really having to talk about. They see this press as being a a more of a uh, um, uh, a mainstream press. And to be honest with you, I, that kind of brings me to the question of throughput. Um, at Drupa, they talked about a throughput of 13,000 sheets an hour, and I and I have uh, uh, Karsted Partners put together a uh, post Drupa overview of the digital solutions. In that, we even state, you know, we even you know brought up that, that it was 13,000 sheets an hour, which is a very impressive speed for a digital press. Um, today, or in the uh, in the meetings, and I'm still waiting for some clarific clarification to come out from uh, from from. Uh, um, uh, from Landa, the link that I'm going to give you in this to uh, to Landa's uh, um, site, and that says that the, the production speed now for a CMYK unit is uh, 6,500 units uh, sheets an hour, which is still probably tw almost twice as fast as any of the other digital solutions out there. But it's it's still short of the of the 13,000. I think that there are some issues around the new the new heads. Um, they need a double bump of uh, of color in the in the head, so they got eight uh, eight heads that are going through, or eight sets of heads. So you got CMYK, CMYK. They're laying a lot of ink down on it, and that's how they got got the faster side. But there, that brings me to the point too that they were also talking, and and uh, Benny was also talking about extended color gamut um, and adding CMYK or adding to CMYK um, uh, orange, violet, and green. To give uh, you know the extended color gamut printing, they see a very big opportunity for extended color gamut in hitting uh, um, you know corporate colors and and brand colors. Now this has been a topic that's really been discussed heavily for for many years, and uh, in that this possibly could be the tipping point as industries try to go go into this. This might this this whole thing might 
be the tipping point or the, the thing that helps it over the edge. I don't know. It remains to be seen. But um, um, again, extended color gamut on the digital press makes perfect sense. I'm not sure how it affects the, uh, the throughput uh, of, uh, of the system. Um, so my final thought on this, and I'm, and I'm running a little bit long, I apologize, but kind of my final thought is I think this, it was very positive news. I was a pragmatist coming out of, uh, coming out of Drupa. I thought that they, they really pinned the uh, coming into, going into to, to beta um, a little bit more aggressively than, than maybe was, was practical. A year out from now, a year from now is not, a time, is not surprising to me. That, that really, really affects the quality that they've gone, the, 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 the length of quality or the improvements in quality is impressive from what I saw at Drupa to what I'm seeing now. Um, it, uh, this, while this isn't rocket science, it sure isn't very easy to do. So I commend the, the land of folks for, for getting to this stage. I commend the land of folks, and I'm really glad for my industry, for the packaging industry, that the first press is going to be the folding carton press. Um, they said that they had over 400 uh, LOIs or letters of intent, and nobody really has pulled back from that because of the, the thing. The people that I've talked to that I know are um, in that uh, um, early installer uh, uh, pool, if you will, um, aren't very disappointed with it. They're, they're disappointed they'd like to have it, but they realize that it needs to be ready, and they're, they're futurists. You know, they're people that are, that are thinking down the line. They didn't think they were buying this press to be installed right then. So, so frankly, I'm impressed with what I saw. I think that this is the, it's on a good track. I um, can't wait to see more. And uh, I, I uh, will probably land the plane here on this one. I, I welcome you to check out the links. I got a link to Landis' website to get the latest um, specifications on it. Got a link uh, um, to our website for the... That the Drupa report, if anybody's interested in purchasing that, that they can uh, they can get an overview of what came out of Drupa at the time and kind of where all that was, um, and uh, and that. So I want to thank Benny for having for being my new BFF. Benny, I, I appreciate that, and and uh, I love the picture of uh, of us together, and uh, um, I appreciate uh, being included in the loop. So I'll bring you any more news as I get it. Again, thanks for uh, thanks for coming and thanks for viewing. Take care. Thank you.